Hey, what's up? It's Sam from Hostler. Today we're here installing the HA5 device in this ambulance. We're going to go through how this thing installs, the basic layout, the tools, and the function of the device so you can install this thing in your truck in 15 minutes or less. The basic tools required to install the HA5 are just going to be an automotive electrical installation set. So sockets, you know, your strippers, some basic uh, pin tools and loom, maybe a screwdriver to open up a center console if you've got to get down into where the wiring is. So really this isn't rocket science. We're going to be looking for power, we're going to be looking for ground, we're going to be looking for a trigger that's on when the primary and secondary mode are both active. Before we start building any harnesses or doing any major electrical work, we want to go ahead and plan the install. And when you're thinking about where this device should be mounted, this thing has a GPS and a cellular transponder inside, so it needs to be mounted within clear view of the open air. So you wouldn't want to mount it, say, up here on the top. You wouldn't want to mount it down here in the console. You really want to mount it somewhere like up on the dashboard. Now, when you're mounting something on the dashboard, you need to keep in mind that there's airbags in these vehicles. So don't mount this thing in an area where an airbag is going to fling it into an occupant in the event of a collision. So when I've looked at this truck, I think we're gonna put it right over here next to the A-pillar. I'm gonna slide it down right by the windshield so it's got clear view of the sky. I've got easy access to run my wiring down, and I'm gonna pull this center console open and see if I can't grab power, ground, and trigger right here behind this switch box. All right, this truck is a hardwired electrical system, and so what we can gather from the wiring that's under here is that it's got an emergency master and then a primary and secondary mode. And we really want to make sure that this device is plugged in so that it operates on both primary and secondary mode. So when we look at the back of it, we can see that the E-Master trigger then feeds into the rest of the switches. And so on this truck, we're going to take these two red wires. One of them is the input. It'll be constant 12 volts all the time. And one of them is the output. That's only going to be when it's switched. So we want to take a meter, figure out which one is the output, and hook our trigger wire to the output side of the switch so that then our, our HA5 comes on anytime the device is responding in either primary or secondary mode. In this truck, what we found, the easiest way to route the wiring is going to be from the dash all the way over to the left where the A-pillar is, and then drop it down. We're going to bring it underneath this foot area and then back behind the driver's seat. And that's where all the wiring today already runs into the center console. So we're just going to use the existing wire pathway so that we can run our wiring with it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pull these panels, and then we'll get into the inside of it. Now, you want to make sure this doesn't hit the airbag. This is an area that's clear of the airbag, clear of the inflators, and you're not going to be in the way of anything if this thing were to get in a wreck. All right, now we have the wiring pulled all the way through to the center console, and we've identified where we're going to hook it in here on the back of the E-Master. And so when you take the three wires going to the HA5 out, the white wire is going to be our trigger, the red wire is going to be the constant battery 12 volt power, and the black's going to be ground. And so something we always recommend doing is fusing these wires so that you don't have uh, a problem if there were ever a short circuit. Um, even if this is fused here on the truck, it's definitely worth adding your own fusing and just fuse it at like two and a half or five amps. This thing draws almost no power um, and we'll hook it up from there. So anyway, I'm gonna hook these fuses on. We'll get it hooked here and then I'll show you the rest. The last step before we test this thing out is gonna be hooking up the power and ground. And so in this truck, I found an equipment charging pre-wire that the ambulance outfitter put in the truck. But if you don't have this sort of thing, what you're looking for is a constant 12 volt power it's not switched and it's not on a timer for the module disconnect. So these two we verified, we turn the key on and off, we cycle the module disconnect, and these are always hot and cold, which is exactly what we want. And then you wanna take your, your wire to your power side on the HA5, fuse it, and hook it directly up. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these in, and we're gonna reassemble the console, and it'll be time to test it. The last step in the installation process is gonna be hooking the device up, attaching it to the dash, and testing everything out. So you can screw this thing in using the four screws in the corner, or you can use double-sided tape or a Velcro system. You just wanna install it so it doesn't come off in the event of a collision. So when you test this thing out, you'll just plug the hardwired cable right into the side of it. These lights will come on. This one here on the left, this indicates that it's connecting for cellular. And this one here on the right, that indicates that it's got a GPS lock. And so when this one's steady burning, that means it's locked on. If it's flashing, it's still searching. If it doesn't stop flashing, go ahead and pull the thing outside and let it see a good clear view of the sky. This one will turn blue and just kind of be a breathing on and off, and that's gonna indicate good cell phone connection. The last step is gonna be testing the responder to vehicle, responder to responder function. The way you do that is just turn the ignition on, fire off your E-Master, it should turn orange. That means that it's broadcasting, and if you sit it there for about a minute and a half, that thing will start flashing to indicate an incident location, which means everything's working 100%. 